Hey, Kids Cook Real Food, Mrs. Kimball here. And I am often asked by members of the community to see into my kitchen and know how it's set up and how we keep it kid friendly and just kind of a real life perspective. So I thought today I would give you a little tour of my kitchen. Now, again, this video is for adults, of course. That's what all of um, these social media videos are because uh, kids shouldn't really be on social media anyway, right? So these are tips for adults to keep their kitchen kid friendly and hopefully efficient. My kitchen may not be aesthetically beautiful. I'm just not that kind of person. I am not a design person. I barely can get myself dressed in the morning and I only wear makeup sometimes. So my kitchen is efficient. It's not beautiful. And so I'm hoping that you get some little gems and little tip today that you can take with you and make your kitchen slightly more efficient so that you feel faster and feel better in the kitchen or that you can make it more kid friendly. I, uh, I shared a picture recently on Instagram of a school lunch that my daughter had packed and it wasn't the most beautiful picture on Instagram, but I don't care because she packed it. She cut all the vegetables. She chose everything that went in there and she was proud of it. And you know what? I'm not raising a picture perfect family. I don't want to raise picture perfect kids. I want to raise independent and healthy kids who I am proud to send off into the world and who will contribute to society millions of times more than I do. That's what I want. So that's what you'll see in this real life tour of the Kids Cook Real Food Kitchen. Of course, if you are a member, or if you've ever seen a preview of some of our courses, you'll know that those classes are not shot in my kitchen because my kitchen's not that pretty. All right, we go pro when we do our classes. We borrow a beautiful kitchen. We get a professional film crew to come in. For this video, my oldest son is going to be the editor because we are a family business and we believe in kids being independent. We do the same thing in our real life as we do in the kitchen and we bumble along and we learn as we go. But I'm, I'm always picking up little tips and it's just that one little thing. We just change one little thing every day or every week and eventually we kind of feel like we maybe have it together or at least enough to pretend we do on the internet, right? So my hope for you, families, parents, is that you get just one little tip today or two or three that can help change your kitchen for the better and make you feel really good about working in the kitchen, eating healthy food, and getting those kids in the kitchen. Okay, are you ready? Let's take a look at my real kitchen. I'm gonna start with something that breaks all the organizational rules. Same thing two different places. Everybody says not to do that, to put like things together, but we have our basic silverware in two drawers. A couple reasons for that. First of all, if guests are in our home, they have double the chances of finding what they actually need in all my drawers. Second of all, one is near the fridge and one is near the table. So we just always have silverware at the ready if we're getting stuff out of the fridge and preparing it for the table or if we're at the table and somebody needs another fork or another spoon. Plus, the fridge area is like, central command, right? That's where we're always working and often that silverware drawer is blocked. So it's really handy to have a backup. Could this work in your home? Maybe if you've got a little extra drawer space, man, go to a garage sale, check Craigslist, get a cheap set of extra silverware. If your family's always running out of silverware and you're waiting for the dishwasher to be done, this is a great option for organization. Now, the second thing I'm gonna show you is our kid-friendly area. We have a couple cabinets down low with all sorts of kids stuff. You can see here we've got in this cabinet breakfast materials that they might need to help move breakfast along, things for snacks and a lot, all of our like nuts and dried fruit because that's always a great snack for kids as well as nut butters and cinnamon for breakfast so they can get it out, they can put it away. Next door, we've got all of our kid size plates, cups and bowls so that kids who are too short to reach the upper cabinets of course, can help in setting the table and putting things away out of the dishwasher. You'll also see here our ranch dressing mix, which was a change I made in the last year. I realized that I, my kids could independently make ranch dressing, but they couldn't reach the ingredients. So we put all the ingredients near each other and down low I made space in my Lazy Susan, which by the way, is one of the more organized areas of my house because it's pantry moth proof. We had a pantry moth incident a few years ago and you can see everything here is in glass or metal containers, most of the things, to keep the pantry mods out. Next, freezer organization is of prime importance. This is everything in my freezer. I also have, and this was like a brilliant idea of mine, pen and permanent marker so I can scratch things off and write on my plastic bags very easily without ever having to leave my kitchen. I have this cool little appliance like hidey hole. See, look. Oh, they almost disappear. 
Got my grain mill in there, KitchenAid, food processor, blender's usually in there, but it's dirty. And then above the blender is the smoothie cabinet. Put that up there. So that whole shelf is all smoothies. Collagen, uh, a couple types of vitamin C, chia seeds, other greens and powders to pump up the smoothie, kelp powder for iodine, cacao powder. Everything is there. I pull it all down, make the smoothie, put it all back. And then inside cupboards, I've got all sorts of little notes, right? Different, um, this is like natural remedies for when things go wrong. And then there was a women's health series on Kitchen Storage Up about what to eat at different parts of your cycle. So you'll see like smoothie add-ins are by the smoothies. Uh, nope, that's not. Salad add-ins are by the plates. And then even down in our snacks cupboard, in our snacks covered, you'll see fruits and snacks and nuts and stuff. And I actually do use these. Like when I'm kind of hungry and like, hmm, what should I eat? And I can't decide. I check what matches with my cycle and I kind of feel better about snacking. The good, the bad, and the ugly of lunch packing. We've got our lunch packing yogurt bowls and thermoses there. One covered over. All the little tins and, and lunch boxes. The good is... All our lunch stuff is together. It's mostly non-toxic. The bad is it's a hot mess. We're getting a couple new uh, lunchbox things in the next few days shipped, and we're going to take everything down, get rid of some plastic stuff, and rearrange. All right, let's talk drawers. How I organize my drawers is not how everyone organizes their drawers, and I know that because people are always putting things away wrong. But I still love it and I cling to it and so I'm going to tell you and maybe it'll work for your family. I organize drawers by where things should be used. So by the cutting board are the knives and the peelers and my garlic because garlic doesn't need to be in the light. And my crinkle cutter that you've seen in the e-course perhaps. We've got our goggles for cutting onions, right? Anything I'd use at the cutting board is here. Right there. Anything I'd use at the stove, which, by the way, let's talk stove. All right, let's talk stove. Yes, there's a teapot, a cast iron a pan, and a griddle on my stove. Always. They're always there because it's easier to leave them there and then put them away. Isn't that funny? And then all our fats, I just know that people would leave them out, so I accept them being out coconut oil and ghee and all sorts of stuff there. All right, to the left of the stove is all the stuff you use on the stove. The, the spatula, the tongs. I love those tongs. These are both on the resources page, by the way. Um, you know, the oven mitts, because they've got to be close. The meat thermometer, anything you'd use, like, at the stove is here. And then anything you'd use to serve is at the last drawer on your way to the table. I don't know why people ever put things away wrong. But, like, you got to serve your rice. We grate Parmesan cheese at the table. Um, there's some other just little scoopers in there and, like, ice cream scoops and stuff. That's This drawer has its moments. It's kind of organized right now. It's only semi but anything for serving goes over here. Those last two drawers get kind of mixed up. And then across the kitchen, I forgot about this. Where I bake is anything used for baking. Measuring cups, measuring spoons, whisk, rolling pin, spatulas, all that jazz is here at the counter where I bake. And I also tend to leave recipes out. This is bad, you guys, but we just kind of throw recipes in here. The ones we use most of all, we know that they're always going to be here. Like Leah is going to make pizza right now for dinner so I can get some work done. Love you, girl. She's getting her stuff out. She's like, Mom, you're taking too long. I know. Finally, back across the kitchen, my big drawer. Everybody's got a bags and wraps drawer, right? We've got saran wrap down there that I've had for like 10 years. I wear that as a status symbol. So we use reusable bags, and so they do get all kind of just thrown in here. We wash and reuse bags. Those all go on top, you know, and then the boxes kind of go on the bottom. If you can see the box, maybe you actually need to, you know, get a new bag. And we got like squishies and pouches and stuff back there. It's, yeah. <laughs> and that happens. I'm not, I'm not beautiful. I'm just quick. Throw it in there. Okay, families. I don't know if that was more like hot tips or true confessions. Yeah, my kitchen's kind of a mess. But more or less, it works. Kids know where things are. They can get things out. They can put things away. And that's really important to me. That's more important than it being... Beautiful and perfect. Um, could I organize better? Yeah, sure. But you know what? If you need a drink, the cups are by the sink where you get a drink. And if you need to, you know, where do you put cloth napkins when they're dirty? 
That's another thing behind the trash, which is usually in there. Behind the trash, we just have a tub for cloth napkins, right? So like, for me, it's all about things making sense, being connected, being where you need them, and being efficient. Yeah, I could use a little spring cleaning, fall cleaning, back to school cleaning. Um, but I just, I just want to share that with you. Like, I open up my kitchen, that's all good. Again, I hope you've got some sort of little tip that can make your kitchen be more efficient and more kid-friendly. And if nothing else, take heart that everyone is a little bit messy. And even those of us who cook for a living and get our kids in the kitchen for a living don't always have a perfect kitchen. And I hope you're okay with that. I'm okay with it. We can be imperfect together, right? Let's do that. Do come back next week for another edition of Tuesday Tips. We always have something great to share to help you be a better parent, help you get your kids in the kitchen, and help you enjoy healthy food together as a family.